So when you're using uh, the GUR method to uh, predict uh, a fluid composition inside of Whitson Plus, uh, you need to uh, remember that uh, that uh, the GUR is a path-dependent property, uh, and uh, there's a huge difference, or at, at least uh, there can be a huge difference between using a so-called total GUR versus a separator GUR. And what you can uh, see here is that when I change from a total GUR to a separator GUR, the assumed inputs is scuffs per separator barrel and not scuffs per stock tank barrels. And stock tank barrels is what we uh, eventually need to, to use in different types of analysis. It's also what we want to use for decline curve analysis, uh, RTA, flow material balance, etc., etc. But the reality is that sometimes our GORs is actually metered at uh, a separator where the conditions are different than what uh, it is uh, at uh, stock tank. Uh, so in those cases, uh, let's say we, we measured a 1,000 uh, scuffs per, per barrel, but it's not uh, at uh, separated conditions, but it is at, uh, uh, not at, uh, at stock tank conditions, but it is at uh, separated conditions. Then we can simply just uh, use this option right here, and we then assume that this, uh, this GUR is inputted at, uh, at uh, this particular GUR, and uh, these conditions right here. So the well has a well process with a, a uh, given um, two-stage process right here. So that's uh, 100 uh, F and 100 PSI uh, A. And uh, what you'll realize is that when we go in and look at the solution GUR for this particular well, it will be a little bit higher than 1,000 because there's an additional shrinkage from separator to stock tanks. So some of the gas is coming out of solution. Uh, and uh, our total GOR or, or the total solution GOR in scuffs per stock tank barrels is a little bit uh, higher.